Glute activation. Glute activation. Glute activation. Glute activation. Getting the glutes to activate. Glute activation is important. One of the biggest problems with squats is knowing how and when to activate your glutes. I want to try to give you a real understanding of how to solve this and explain why you hear some of the standard cues all your favorite tubers tell you, but never really explain. Everyone knows the butt has three main muscles. There's the Latin name, the scientific name, and the I looked it up so I could sound like an expert on YouTube name. There's also a bunch of little ones I learned about thanks to Sam Weber over on his channel. To pull out more technical words, your Latin name does extension, straightens the hip, and the other two do abduction, turns the thigh. We'll see this in action later. Experts and gurus will tell you to do a variety of exercises to activate your glutes. Most popular are glute bridges, but you'll also see a lot of donkey kicks, leg raises, and sideways shenanigans using whatever brand of stretchy bands they've recently been sponsored by. Now don't get me wrong, these all have their place, but I don't think any of them are really great for teaching you how to activate your glutes, and none of them really transfer over to squats very well at all. Glute bridges, the one that would be the most similar to what I'll show you, doesn't teach you the difference between using your glutes and using your quads, and confuses things by making you lie down. I think any substantial difference between how you're learning a skill and how you're eventually going to apply the skill only serves to make it more difficult. If you're learning how to squat better, learn it standing up. So, time to learn? I teach someone how to load the hamstrings by performing Romanian deadlifts. No! I've always wanted to use that Luther clip, but seriously, teaching someone an isolation activation using a compound movement, Romanian deadlifts, a more difficult movement than the one that he's trying to help improve, conventional deadlifts, doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, I know that he's talking about hamstrings and I'm talking about glutes, but the point is the same. You don't teach how to isolate muscle activation by using a compound exercise. If you need to learn how to activate one muscle or a closely related group of muscles, as in this case, you need to get off the compound stuff and into real isolation. Now that I've got my PVC pipe, you know it's about to get serious. This exercise is simple, straightforward, and you do it every day. You're gonna learn how to do it so that it'll help your squat. Find a step and step up with just one leg until your knee is straight. Just like you're going upstairs. Casual, simple, easy. At the top, you're leaning forward just a little, like you're gonna go up the next step. The way you probably did this was mostly using your quads. When you go upstairs, you lean forward, weights on the ball of your feet, and you quad your way up. If that's not how you did it, go find a flight of stairs and go up and down, and stop trying to box step your way up. Do this a couple of times until you can feel your quads working just a bit. Now we're gonna change it up. This time, instead of leaning forward, shift your weight forward a little bit and ascend only by squeezing your butt as hard as you can. You should notice at the top, you're no longer leaning forward. If you've done this properly by only squeezing your butt, then when your knee gets straight, your hips are also straight and you're standing straight up. Do this a few more times until you can feel your butt working instead of your quads. If you're having trouble, you can try going sideways instead of forward. Now you've almost learned how to activate your glutes for squatting. If you're squeezing all your butt muscles as hard as you can, you had a slightly different experience getting all twisty and probably off balance. Here's where the screw your feet into the ground cue comes in. Screw your feet into the ground. Screwing your feet or your thighs into the floor. Screw your feet into the ground. You want to think of your feet standing on top of pickle jars with lids. And what you're going to do is you're going to dig and twist your heel into the ground as if you're unscrewing the lids off of the jar. This is the difference between the Latin name and the other two. The extensor makes your leg go straight back and the abductors hold you for ransom. They're the ones that make you go off balance. They're the ones that everyone's trying to get you to activate when they say, screw your feet into the ground. But no one ever explains why you're doing this. The two reasons to be sure the medius and minimus are active are, first, it's tough to activate them without engaging maximus. It's possible, but you really gotta try. And secondly, it keeps your knees from collapsing. Your knees can't flop in if the muscles that push them out are engaged. That's it. And by the way, knees collapsing leads to knee pain and pain is bad, so don't let your knees collapse. Push, push the knees out by using 
your abductors, and you're good. So this shows you how to isolate one muscle and one group of muscles. It keeps you vertical in basically the same position as the start of a squat. It gives you a way to practice that doesn't make you flop around on the floor or use my Amazon link for the latest stretchy gear. And on top of that, you can practice this pretty much whenever you want.